Welcome to another video on our Embedded Craft channel. This video tutorial is about signals. We will explain Linux signals with an experiment showing LED toggling upon receiving a signal. We are going to use C code for this. So, relax and watch this video till the end. In this tutorial you will need to use serial port and LED connected to BeagleBone board. You can watch these two video tutorials explaining using serial port and using GPIO. This tutorial is for serial port interfacing. And for LED blinking in C code we have tutorial named as accessing GPIO and LED blinking on BeagleBone board. Link of both videos is given in description. Hardware requirement is simple. You can use any board which is capable of running Linux. For this video, we are using a BeagleBone board and a LED. You will see the circuit diagram for LED interface shortly in this video. Signal is very similar to interrupt. It is a method of sending notification to process. Linux process can receive signals from multiple sources. For example, SIG bus signal. Child process can also send SIG CHLD signal to parent process. Question may be, what process will do when signal is received? When signal is received, process will run signal handler. When execution of signal handler is complete, control will return back to process. We have to register the signal handler first. For some signals there are predefined activities, which a process will do upon receiving signal. When SIG kill signal is received then the process will terminate. For some signals, core dump is also generated, for example SIG ABRT. In case of SIG ABRT signal, process is terminated and code dump is generated. Signal can also let process execution suspended or resumed. Signals are defined as integer numbers. Please note these numbers depend on Linux distribution. So, always refer signum-generic.h file available with Linux distribution. For example sigint is number 2. Signal name are start with sig, and these characters represent signal description. One more point, signals can be standard signal or real-time signals. Real-time signals can be queued and real-time signals also have priority. We will discuss real-time signals in some other video tutorial. So, who can send signals to process? Another process can send signals, we will use this in our example program. There are many other scenarios. Linux kernel sends signal due to hardware exceptions, for example SIG bus signal. Even you can send signal via input terminal like using CTRL and C. CTRL pulse C will generate SIG term signal. Software events like timer expiry, child process terminates, will generate a signal. Signal can be masked or unmasked. When signal is masked, signal delivery is blocked. When signal is unmasked, like here signal is unmasked then signal will be delivered immediately. When signal is masked, signal delivery is stopped. There are various system calls that allow a process to add and remove signals from its signal mask set. Let us focus on our experiment, which is LED toggling upon receiving a signal. We will use LED toggle example. We have two processes. One process will be signal receiver. Another process will be signal sender. Signal sender process will send SIG USR1 signal to signal receiver process. And signal receiver process will toggle LED. Let us see LED connection on BeagleBone board first. LED is connected to GPIO128. GPIO128 is available at port 9, pin number 12. Port number 9 and pin number 12. LED cathode is connected to ground pin at P9, 1. To access the LED, first we have to find out GPIO number. 
it is calculated from GPI 01, number 28. 1 is multiplied by 32, and then we will add 28. This will become 60. In programming we have to use GPI 060. First we have to set the direction, of GPI 060 port. For that we have to write, out, to the direction file. And here is the command. We have to type echo, out, root, sys, class, GPI 060, direction. To glow LED we have to make GPIO pin high. We have to write one to value file. Command is, echo, one, root, sys, class, GPIO 60, value. To switch off LED we have to make GPIO pin low. For this we have to write zero to value file. Let us review source code. We have signal sender process. It is using kill API to send signal. We have to pass process ID and give signal number to kill API. Signal is sig user 1. The process ID of the signal receiver. Suppose process ID of signal receiver is 234789. Signal receiver has to register signal handler. For that we have to use SIG action structure. ESA underscore SIG action field will get the name of signal handler. SIG empty set API will unmask all signals. SIG action API is registering my SIG action with my signal. It means when SIG user 1 signal is received, then the handler function will execute. Let us review our signal handler. Signal handler will be called when the signal is received by process. Signal number will be seen in SIG variable. We are saying that when SIG is equal to my signal, then we want to toggle LED. If LED toggle variable is 0, we will make it 1. And if LED toggle variable is 1, we will make it 0. Based on LED toggle variable, we will toggle LED. Let us see signal sender and signal receiver code. We have used Eclipse IDE for development. Let it open. We will see signal sender and signal receiver code. Here we are having two processes. One is signal sender and another is signal receiver. This is the code in signal sender process. We will run this program like this. Signal underscore send and hyphen s, we have to pass signal number, and use hyphen p, to pass process id. So, to pass these arguments we will use get ops standard library function. And we have to pass argument c, and argument v, and we have to pass a string, s colon, p colon, because we are using s and p with argument. For example, argument s will be followed by, integer numbers we have to use colon after s. Similarly we are using colon after p, because we will pass process id to it. In case of s, opt argument will contain the string representing of signal number. This will be converted into integer, and integer value will be stored into the sig num variable. In the same way, process id will be stored into the pid variable. And by default, we will be assigning sig int signal to signum variable. After that we have to use the kill API to send signal. We have to pass process ID and signal number, which we want to send. At the end we will print this message. You can see, signal send process coding is quite simple. Let me go to signal receiver code. This is my process. Here is C file. OK, this is our main function. Let us review our signal handler. In signal receiver, as we have seen, we are going to receive two signals. One is my signal, 
which is SIG user 1 signal, and second is SIG int, this is to exit from the signal receiver process. Because my signal handler is same for both signal, so we are calling SIG action API for two times. During the first call of SIG action, we are registering my signal. In the second call we are registering my exit signal. So, the same handler will be called when we receive any of these two signals. Now we have to write LED toggling code. Remaining code in this file is for LED toggling. Because we have already discussed LED toggling code, so let us skip this here, and move forward. We are now building these two projects. Now we are ready to run these programs on our board. First we have to transfer files to board. We are using scp command. Typing scp, space file name, username at the rate of board IP address and, path on board. File is transferred. Same way we can transfer signal receiver file. Let us do ssh login to our board. Type ssh, Debian at the rate of board IP address. Enter password for Debian user. Now, we are on our target board. Type ls here. And we have our signal receiver and signal sender files. We have to review, whether we have GPIO60 already exported or not. Type ls and root, sys, class, GPIO. We don't have GPIO60. We can do this by writing 60 to the export file in GPIO. Type echo 60 to root, sys, class, GPIO, export. Now we have GPIO 60. We are good to go now. Let us do SSH login in second terminal. Now we have two terminal open for our target board. In first terminal, we are running signal receiver process. 1012 is the process ID. Now move to the second terminal to run signal sender. Type signal sender, hyphen S, signal number, hyphen P, and process ID. Signal is send. We can see LED is glowing now. If we again send signal number 10, LED is toggled. In this way whenever we send signal, receiver process receives the signal and run signal handler. And signal handler is toggling LED. If we send signal number 2, which is SIGINT, this should terminate our signal receiver process. Wow, process is terminated. This is working as per our expectation. With this we are going to end this session. Hope. You have a decent idea how signals work in Linux. If you like our video, please don't forget to subscribe to Embedded Craft YouTube channel. We will meet in our next video tutorial. Meanwhile goodbye and take care.